Hey everybody, welcome back. Adam Flowers here on Mob Vlog. It is December 27th, 2023. The last broadcast on Mob Vlog for 2023. Next time we're going to see you guys will be in 2024. So uh, let's uh, let's wrap this year up. Here we go. Mob Vlog. Hey everybody, grab a coffee and cannoli. It's time for Mob Vlog with my friend Adam Flowers and Red Wamet. Oh, Red, how are you doing today? I'm doing chipper. <laughs> chipper. It's a little it's a little chilly out here in Vegas, man. Am it's, I? it's chilly here. Barely made this. Barely made this show. Um, barely made it. So I had one minute to spare, and I uh, didn't know if I was going to make it or not today. We put it up last night, last minute, going, let's do a show today. And, uh, you know, hit our... Uh, Hit our mark, but uh, mom had a knee, new knee put in, and uh, this morning, so I had to to uh, get mom and make sure she's got home safe. So, hi mom, if you're watching, <laughs> I'm sure she is. So, Paul Young, Chef Paul, booked the mob tour with Adam in February. Can't wait. Yeah, there's twelve of you coming. <laughs> twelve of you coming. A bunch of Chicago coppers. Yeah, I got you. Got to love it, man. I mean, really, honest to God, you got to love it. Um, <laughs> just wild. Okay, so hello everybody. BSJ, Brady, Gomp, Don Chichio, Deep Portzalo, Eric Epstein, Sean Pender. Welcome in, guys. Van Pastor, Matt, excuse me, Van Pastor, man. Bobby Bag of Donuts. The whole crew's here. Scott, Scott H is coming in soon. I don't see Scott H, but he's coming in very soon. I'm gonna get to see him. He's again. here. He's here. Oh, he's in, the, he's in the room. Okay, great. Big Tuna, Tim Peroni. Uh, I know that Scott H is going to be in Vegas. So Ron Roos, knee replacements are always joint ventures. <laughs> uh, Red, don't take out your teeth and throw them at your car. You might dent your car. <laughs> oh, good son. Hope your mom recovers. So thank you very much, Brady. Appreciate it. Scott H, see you in a couple of weeks. There he is. Um, so everybody's here. Julie M even. So welcome in, guys. Uh, Chuck, Chuck, hold on, I missed something. Chuck Ellertson, Ellerts, hello from Chicago. Hey, Chuck, we've never had you on the show. Welcome in, welcome in. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Uh, we've seen a lot of new faces coming in uh, lately. In the in, so a lot of subscribers going up still. And uh, for those of you that don't know who Red Wamed is, uh, Red, you're from Chicago. Well, yeah. technically, it, Chicago, Chicago, Cicero, Chicago, Chicago suburbs, Chicago well, downtown. Originally, Ohio, though, weren't you in Ohio first when you when you were making the bowling balls? No, that was Moline. Oh, that was in Moline. I was down there for um, Quad Cities. I was oh. down there for uh, like two years. So Red Red uh, got involved with the Chicago mob as a mole, FBI mole, uh, wired up your whole place and. Uh, when they'd come by and say, hey, where's my envelope? <laughs> you'd sit there and you'd bullshit with them a little bit, have a drink, talk to Frank Schweiss, Tony Spilatro, these guys. That was it. Irv, Irv Weiner. All, yes. all of them. You got all of this involvement with, what was it, American bonding? Yes. Right? That was where more, I met Milwaukee Phil and uh, Tony and Joey, the whole crew. Milwaukee Everybody. Phil as well. Phil Aldericio. So, if you could describe him in one word, what would the word be? Uh, very diligent. Uh, he was. Right, that's more than one word. Hold on, that's more than one word. Just one word. Diligent. Okay. Fair enough. A diligent person. Mm -hmm. uh, Jared Sanders. This is my first mob vlog. I'm in Vegas now, staying at the Four Seasons. Man, the Four Seasons is really nice, Jared. Um, yeah. That's a nice place to stay. Well, welcome onto the show. We haven't said hello to you yet. Uh, if you're new here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, be sure to uh, pop in. So I don't know where you guys want to go with this today. Um, oh, James Bong. <laughs> Bong? James Bong. Really? Sup? God bless from West Kentucky, y'all. Oh, now that explains it. All you had to say was West Kentucky. Right on, Bong. James Bong. <laughs> I had family from down in Kentucky, but that's long, long ago. You know, like roots that, you know. A little bit like other <laughs> Daniel Gonzalez. Betty Maltese was the first lady of the outfit scamming $12 million from Cicero Township. Yeah, she Tell was. Us, Red. 
she was a Cicero. That was after my time. After we I talked left. about it. We she was Cicero it. town attorney. She was at, actually president. She was she was a lot of things. She had uh, a lot of a lot going on out there at at one time. So she like she scammed. She gave to other people too. So <laughs> Robin Hood. Yeah. Well, Robin Hood with the mob. <laughs> Okay, if Robin Hood could be a girl. But I guess today, you know, if Robin Hood identified that way, it would work. So you never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Red's choking up over here. <laughs> oh, Robert Bryles. There's so many new names. I've never said that name before. Carol Stream. Wow. Man, I was up in Carol Stream a couple of times. That's a, it's a little off my beaten path at, you know, south side. Out west, out yeah. west yeah. Yeah, it was far west. Isn't that further than Charleston, isn't it? Charleston, Illinois? Uh, St. Charles. St. Charles, rather. Yeah, sorry. St. Charles. It's out there. Oh, yeah. Jim Magnifici, Falconhood, as in Maltese. Betty Lauren, Frank Maltese's wife. Maltese's wife, Betty Lauren. Yeah. So I've heard that uh, uh, Red and I talked about that before. You're the one. Actually, you told me about it. So uh, that's how that came up. Um, anyway, so um, I hope that you guys all uh, had a great year this year. I hope your Christmas was good. Did you have a good Christmas, Red? I had a great Christmas. I really did. Did Santa Claus bring you everything you wanted? Yeah. He brought me happiness. That okay. was good. That's all that's important. Really is, man. It's all about. Really yeah. Um, Bobby Bag of Donuts, Carol Stream Bowling Alley. You, you met Walter Payton. Yeah, he used to Walter. hang out there. He was out in Carol Stream all the time. Really? Yeah. Steve Chesiday. What? What mob? There's no mob. Of course not, Steve. There can't be. Why? Why would there be a mob? Gone but not forgotten. There you go. Um. Okay, Jared. My stepfather, Bill. Di Stefano was related to Mad Sam. He was born in Cicero, but raised in Chicago. Mad Sam was his uncle. Your stepfather, his uncle, was Mad Sam. Wow. Who is this? Do you have any interesting stories? I'm sure he does, Jared. Then come on, right? Who could be yeah. that close to him and not have some kind of story? You know, I mean, and, and, and when I say interesting story, it's like, yeah, you know, love my uncle uh, Sam. Yeah, <laughs> right? crazy but you know i mean it's what it is you're lagging a little bit today red just so you know you're you're uh freezing up here and there okay i don't know why but um <laughs> anyway Ooh. so uh dealing with the mob in chicago red if you summed up what your experience was like in a few words what would you say risky hmm Especially when that camera fell. That was a little bit of risk, yeah. So it was, it was reading people too. Uh you just had to read people. You know, yeah. know, know what was going on around you. Be alert. Head on a swivel. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. So Jared Sander, did he own apartments on Harlem Avenue in Stickney? Um I'm guessing that uh you're asking if he doesn't even admit the hold on jared he doesn't even admit the relationship that's how the family felt about sam wow yeah interesting huh see you never know i mean when you you you, you hear about the, the the sides of these guys and how it's you know one side's like they're quite a dichotomy some of them um two different sides but you know what i was i was watching something this morning so after my mom she went into the hospital i'm sitting at home and I was watching Oscar Goodman in an interview. Fuck, man, it had been from the 90s. It was posted on YouTube at least 10 years ago. And uh, all these people, like Oscar secretaries, different people that were being interviewed, talking about Tony Spilatro. And they're like, oh, he was the nicest guy. He was the most mild-mannered, calm guy. And you, you sit there going, really? I mean, that's what everybody who says they knew him was. That's what they all describe as he as he as he was you know i knew a lady that was on the pta with him and she said that he was he, 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 nice calm like easy going you know very mild mannered gentlemanly like 
So, yeah. Even Diane Hansen, when we had Diane on the show, she described him as easygoing. He looked like a kid, college kid, she said. Sure, sure. Uh, Scott H., just being around dangerous people is risky. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, Billy Opland, hi, watch often first time live. Well, welcome in live, Billy. Good to have you with us. Where are you from? Uh, Bobby Bag of Donuts, nobody's perfect. Man, you're not kidding, right? Nobody's perfect. We're all sinners. So, <laughs> Van Pasterman, Tony was probably low-key unless he wanted something you had. That's right. There you go. Yeah. So, hmm. Tony Spilatro always gave Chuck Gowdy a problem. I don't know if he always did. If Chuck Gowdy gave him a problem. <laughs> he'd he'd get was, with the camera. <laughs> he was a thorn in his side. Kind of like that Ned Day out here in Vegas. Ned Day was the news reporter, and uh, yeah, they had a they did not like him. Back and forth. Did not like him one bit. So uh, Red, who ran the rackets in St. Louis and how were they controlled by the Chicago outfit? John McKelvey wants to know. I do not know the intricacies of that. Um, we never even talked about St. Louis. The only time I even heard about St. Louis was the recording that uh, uh, Joey Lombardo made where he called Morris Shanker as he his life for Alan Dorfman. Yeah. Um, but but Chicago did oversee St. Louis. I mean, they oh, yeah. were definitely they, a subsidiary of Chicago. They didn't make a move without getting the okay from Chicago. Yeah. Seems like all of them. It was in Milwaukee, Detroit, St. Louis, Kansas City, Cleveland, St. Uh, St. Louis, New Orleans. My, they all had to check in. Everything right? west of the Mississippi belonged to Chicago. Right. West of the Mississippi and east. Well, Cleveland. Cleveland was east. So is Detroit. But Cleveland had New York connections. So did Detroit. Yeah. Also, Detroit kind of went both ways, huh? Chicago and New York? Oh, yeah. That really? They Hoffa. played defense, huh? Well, that was because of Hoffa. Everyone wanted a piece of Hoffa. Gotcha. Gotcha. They say that the first loans out into Vegas that Jimmy Hoffa made, um, the first two loans didn't go to casinos. They built the Boulevard Mall and then the Sunrise Hospital is where our first two Jimmy Hoffa Teamsters loans for Vegas. By the way, you know Hoffa never made a loan that didn't make money? He never lost on a loan. Yeah. Yeah. S smart. Smart business. Um, Bong, James Bong from West Kentucky. I enjoyed listening to these broadcasts. I hear stories I've never heard before, much appreciated. Hey, man. Well, I'm glad that you enjoy it. I, I learn something new every time we go on air. And it's either from, from, from you guys, from Red... Uh, or maybe something we pull up and we read. So who knows? Always learn something new, though. Scott H., Tony must have had split personalities. After he killed a lot of people, he crushed a guy's skull in a vice, after all. No. <laughs> he didn't have a split personality. He 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 turned that part of him on when he had to. That was at uh, Milwaukee Phil's discretion. He told him uh, he didn't really do it. Phil is the one that crushed his head. He was there holding the guy. Wow. Alberto Lopez, I had an uncle who was in the cartel, and we never found out until after he got killed. We just thought he was a businessman. Alberto, I'm so sorry to hear that um, uh, about your uncle. But, you know, um, that's what a lot of people say, that, you know, families that, that are involved with it. For instance, Millicent Siegel, Bugsy Siegel's uh, daughter. I got to sit and have lunch with her 15 years ago, about 15 years ago, somewhere around 08. And she sat there with a straight face and she said to me, my father was a businessman and he was a hotel developer and a bad, bad man killed him. And she said it with a straight face. And I said, okay. <laughs> well, that's that's a daughter's point of view. He had a family life. Sure. And that's what he, you know, they, they want that. Uh, yeah. Benjamin Kundari. Kundari, my grandfather played golf with Al Capone. My brother has a picture of them together. That's pretty dang cool, huh? Got just some bragging rights right there. Have to hang on the mantle. <laughs> <laughs> Put it up on the mantle. There you go. Um, Leanne rolling along. How you doing? <laughs> Leanne, Leanne's in here. Yes, uh, there she is. 
Hey, Leanne, hope that you're having a great day. Um, so, Victor Hubler, hope you both had a wonderful holiday. Yes, indeed. Uh, mob guys seem to seem to able turn on and off their great and ugly personalities on a dime. Yeah, Victor, it's like they 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 flip. They can flip like a like a switch, you know. Just like that's it's a it's a protection thing. <laughs> they want to. If they get too loose or whatever, they just want to, they, oh, I better protect my own self, you know? Right. Polly Dibbs, whoop, whoop. Have you guys had a Merry Christmas? Hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. Did you see Polly Shiro finally got out? Did he get out, really? Yeah, he was released. Paul Shiro, the Indian, they called him, right? Right, to Halfway House. He went away during Family Secrets. He's probably well, he, the only he, one that really got out. You couldn't do that today. That's culturally inappropriate. You'd have to call him Polly the Native American. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. <laughs> smart criminals hide in plain sight. Indeed, right? I guess if there's such thing as a smart criminal. Joy I Lombardo. mean, it, definitely dumb criminals, like the guy, you know, the guys like do stupid shit and get caught. And I could go down a list of that. You know, things that I, I, at least through my study and research and whatnot for the crime tour in Vegas, it's uh, it's crazy. You know, saw uh, Porfirio Duarte Herrera. He, uh, look him up. He got um, busted for putting the pipe bomb on the car back in May of 2007 at the Luxor Hotel. He had his, uh, actually Omar Denver put it on. Porfirio built the bomb, the pipe bomb, and they put it on the car. And anyway, that Porfirio, he got tired of sitting up there in jail. You believe that? Yeah. Yeah, he took some battery acid, put it on the window, popped the window out, walked by an empty guard tower, and walked right back to Vegas. <laughs> Tried to get on a friggin' tour bus and go to Tijuana. And if the dude, all he had to do was put a friggin' mask on, nobody would have ever recognized him. He'd have been out to Tijuana. Dumb criminal, you see? Yeah. There's one there. There's a prime example of what. Okay. Lombardo, so Joey Lombardo, never, he was in plain sight. He lives at the same address. Everybody know where he knew where he lived. The police knew. The FBI knew. And he just walked around the city and did whatever he wanted to do. He was in plain sight. Yeah, um, he did. He would be walking around all that neighborhood and ride his bicycle around and everything. Scott H. wants to know, Red, would you say the outfit just killed their own, except for Frank Schweiss, who killed his young girlfriend? Uh No. There were other people that I would call collateral damage, uh, that they would call collateral damage, that really weren't supposed to be killed, that got killed. Some cases. The majority, I'd say you're right, Scott. Uh, uh, Scott uh, the majority were business, but uh, occasionally there was collateral damage. Uh -huh. Was that Helen Brock? Yeah, there's a thing. She was, um, there were a lot of people killed with that whole thing, but okay. she was... Um, uh, involved they brought the mob in on her but uh she was uh not collateral damage she was the target and um they did a good job because they in in a sense of the word because it was never solved they didn't find a body okay for those of you on medication jim yeager wants you to know it's 4 20. that's the central standard time not <laughs> just be clear on that dan low fat Guys, I'm no criminal, but I still don't get caught doing stupid shit. Guys, I'm no criminal, but I still don't get caught doing stupid shit. Yeah, like weaving in lanes on the highway. <laughs> okay. Decibalis Rex. Merry Christmas from Romania. Hey, Decibalis Rex all the way to Romania. It's good to have you with us uh, today. So nice to, uh, or in, in your case, probably tomorrow already. I don't know. Maybe it's tomorrow. Um, Romania is ahead of us, isn't it? Eight hours ahead of us. It's got to be yeah. 10 30 there, 10, maybe it's later than that. Um, I know England's eight hours ahead. So I think that Romania is a little bit further. And Dave, hour difference, but I, you know, it's there. Dave Jacinto, anyone traveling to Vegas needs to take Adam's mob tour. The Vegas Mob Tour. Great time, and the kids really enjoyed it. Yeah, Dave, thanks for bringing the kids on board. That's always fun for the kids. So it's they weren't little, little kids. I mean, you know, they, they're grown kids. But 
anyway, thanks, Dave. It's, uh, it's nice to see you and, and uh, hear from you again. Uh, I knew guys who were trunked in the late 70s, early 80s. Billy Oplin. Well, if you lived kitty corner from Joey the Clown Lombardo, then you probably did know people who were trunked in the late 70s oh, and yeah. 80s. Oh, yeah. You know, right there in that neighborhood. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> It's uh, it's it's 22 minutes after, so it just turned tomorrow in Romania, Brad. In case you're wondering, and anybody else is wondering, so that makes Romania 10 hours ahead of us. Wow. So, okay. Um. Uh. Hey, Hollywood 210. Everyone have to do the mob tour. Great fun. Thank you, Hollywood. Man, you know, I'm glad that you guys are tuning in. You, everybody goes on the tour. I always tell them about the the about the channel. I always say we, you know, check it out, and and they do. They want to go in the playlist, and they want to watch the Coffee with Colada playlist, and all of the videos about Frank, and the, you know, we're all and uh, organized in there, and and yeah, her togs. I'm reading Polly Dibbs here. Polly Dibbs, who did you guys see the most in the headlines from Chicago over the years? I would assume Spilatro until the Family Secrets trial. What would you say, Red? I very seldom saw Tony on uh, the news uh, in Chicago, but um, uh, I, the guy, uh, Joey Lombardo, made the news a lot. And uh, actually, Frank Collada did in the early years. Uh, he was always getting arrested <laughs> for something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I don't know if there was one specific, Tony Accardo. He'd always make good uh, copy. They talk about uh, Tony uh, uh, Cardo's uh, income tax, and he'd be indicted. And it was a civil thing where they just uh, he paid the fine. That was it. But he got a lot of ink. He really did. Okay. Um, Polly Walnut. Since I got Red's book last year for Christmas, this year I got the Gangs of Chicago. Hope it's good as well. I think I think that's a good book. Um, pretty, I'm pretty sure I've heard of that. Or I haven't heard well, anything bad about it, really. Okay. So, uh, Calabrese seemed to be on the news a lot. Dave Jacinto seems to remember. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was in the 90s. I was gone then. I didn't even know that family existed. Okay. So that was that was after your time. So but when you were there in the well, they were, they were laying low, they were laying real low. I, they were doing things when I was there, but um, they weren't. Nobody knew about them. That was the Chinatown crew, and nobody really knew anything about them. That knew me. We didn't talk about them. Right. Um, St. Louis with Schechner had the Aladdin and Dunes. More Schechner. Oh, Shanker, more Shanker, yeah. Right. You're the Aladdin's the Dunes from St. Louis. So, uh, St. Louis, John O., according to him, St. Louis' family was uh, for a while under Kansas City and then declared independence from Kansas City. But Kansas City was under Chicago, so technically St. Louis is still under Chicago, even if they're, you know, going to – Kansas City was just bigger than them maybe, right? They weren't they – didn't, they didn't have the presence that uh... – Kansas City had or Chicago had when they they branched off on their own when they had enough people and enough business where they could do it. Right. Um, <clears throat> Bobby Hertogs, one of the Accardo burglars, was a friend when I was a teenager. Mm. Bobby Hertogs, is that one of the guys that broke into Accardo's house and stole all that? He's no longer around, I'll tell you that much. Well, I didn't like five or six crews or seven crews get wiped out because of that incident. Oh, they wow. want to make sure they got him. Yeah. Eh, there's collateral damage for you. But again, I guess that's amongst the mob, right? Yeah. Well, not exactly. Some were freelance uh, burglars. Sure. It was freelance. They weren't paying tribute to them. Of course. But that was a message that was sent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they sent a lot of messages by killing people. Desabolix Rex. Lady in red, the one who betrayed Dillinger, is buried in my city. Wow. What city is that? Where was she, she buried? Deported. She was deported to uh, Romania. Was she? She got deported, huh? Yes. She's the one who came out of the theater and lit the cigarette up to give the signal? She gave some signal. And 
That was it. Oh, the they promised her they wouldn't deport her, and they did. Oh, no kidding, huh? Oh, yeah. Went back on their word. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's not like the government. <laughs> uh, Billy, if you have it in writing, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> Billy Dibbs, does La Petra's Italian club still exist? Yes. Okay, were there any other big spots widely known to be outfit owned? Oh, yeah, lots of them. Yeah. Well, what about Villa Ven Venice or Villa oh, Venice? Villa Venice. <laughs> uh, that was, they burned it down, but it was a spot back in the day. And uh, there were other places, a lot of places. It burned down? Oh, yeah. The Villa Venice. Yeah. It they burned? Torched, they torched it, yeah. Oh, Arsene. they got that, that, uh, that uh, what's it called? Greek lightning? Yeah, that's what, what it was. Greek <laughs> lightning. <laughs> yeah. Two guys sitting there on the beach in Fort Lauderdale. And the guy said, what did you do before you retired? He said, oh, he said, I owned a um, appliance store. And he said to him, yeah. He said, what happened? He said, well, he caught fire and uh, burned down. He said, what did you do? He said, hell, he said, I had a clothing store. He said, my place flooded. And uh, the other one looked and says, how do you cause that to happen? Yeah. <laughs> um, Timisor, I can't, I can't pronounce this. This is Romania. Timisora, Timisora, I guess. Timisora, Sora, Timisora, Romania. So, um, you know, I'm taking care of my buddy. I've been checking in on him and, uh, he just happens to be saying uh, hello. Hey, Jack, we're on air right now. Oh, okay. What's the subject matter, me? Oh, no, we're not talking about you. think the subject matter is you? Well, it should be. It's Wednesday. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Uh, I'll call you after the, the program. Okay, I'll talk to you later, Jack. Bye. Right. 88 and a half years old. 88 and a half. Oh, poor guy. We got to get his cataracts fixed. We're trying to figure out how to do that so he can see. Right now, he can't see that well. Uh, Kevin Rathert, glad you uh, glad you to see you guys back on Retina's Day. Greetings from Southern Illinois. Happy holidays, Adam and Red. Kevin, happy holiday, happy holidays to you and your. Did I say happy holidays? I really, I started to say happy holidays to you and your family. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I, you know, I, I came up with the worst dad joke the other day. So my partner, my partner. Dad, Dick, you don't make bad jokes. No, no, my partner, Dick, I'm giving him some cigars for Christmas. And he's standing there in the kitchen. And we're putting him, he's trying to fit him into this cigar box. And he can't, I gave him too many. He couldn't fit them all in there. So. So he's arranging them and arranging them, and he's trying the lid, and he's like, almost, almost, and finally, eh, close. And I looked at him and said, but no cigar. <laughs> I got shot the craziest look I've ever seen Dick give me. He's like, <laughs> where the hell did that come from? <laughs> Hey, uh, Polly Dibs at Scott, hit the refresh sometimes. The counter's slow, but yes, everybody hit the like button. You hear that? Polly Dibs, hit the like button. If you're on Facebook, hit the love button. You can do that too. You can give it a heart, you know, instead of a instead of a, a thumbs up. Good thing it doesn't have one of these because people may hit that one. You know what I mean? She's like, boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> Um, likes aren't refreshing correctly. It's up to 46 now. I have no idea. I can't see what it is, guys, but I can see that there's over 100 of you in here. So thanks for coming out and being us. But you know, th the week after Christmas, this is a slow ass time on YouTube. I mean, channels struggle on YouTube. The fact that we're we're topping 100 people right now is pretty damn good. So, um, yeah, Red's playing music in the background. Yeah, that's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can hop on this time of year. It's okay, LOL. Uh, Van Pasterman, yeah. It's, uh, you can't fix a cataracts, then get a rinkin'. 
Okay. I was at the doctor and he said, doctor, doctor came in and says, you have cataracts. And the Asian guy said, no, no, doctor, I have Rincon Continental. <laughs> okay, now Red gets it. Just had, to, had to say it a little differently. <laughs> I refreshed the page. All right, good, 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 good. Guys, it is good to have you in. I'm back. Big Tuna, good to have you back. Adam, people are so busy up till Christmas. Then they just want to chill because they're all tired. And I agree. You feel like chilling out too? That's what I call Christmas week. Yeah. It's uh, between Christmas and New Year's. You know, I got that chill. Usually between Christmas and New Year's, I am slammed with tours. But this year, I decided that spend a little time at home, shut down Christmas. I stayed home. I didn't go work. Had people wanted to buy tickets, but we were shut. And, uh, and uh, now I have a couple days off because I get to look after mom and uh, stay there, which is great. I mean, that's that's wonderful. Not everybody gets that opportunity or has that ability to to do that. Um, anyway, Ian McCarthy. <laughs> Ian McCarthy, do you guys think there's a chance, there's any chance, Jimmy Marcello tells anything about the Spilatro brothers' disappearance? I, they don't want to know. They know everything they want to know. They got the conviction. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I uh, No idea. Uh, Big Tuna, I've been working in Louisiana and crappy hours. Man, Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there once, twice. I always wanted to go there and do that. Um, Mardi Gras. Have you, have you done that? Have you gone up there and done it? Yeah. February. February. <laughs> you go there just to see the boobies, don't you? Don't I lie. Everything. I went there for everything yeah. except for drugs. Red I, pulls up. He's got a case of beads in the back of his car. He's like, hell yeah, show me them boobies. Let's throw these there. <laughs> I see what you're doing over there. <laughs> it was it was fun. It really was. Scott H is on vacation. He's energetic. He goes bike riding and when he's going driving around and doing his his, you know touring around the country he gets out and rides his bike every day and you're super energetic scott um you never know where scott's gonna be i'll tell you i'm in georgia oh I'm yeah he's all over the place all over the place crazy so um chain weaver you gotta hit the like button yeah don't forget hit the like button the model lincoln's that are owned by clowns are frown cars the model of Lincolns that are owned by clowns are frown frown cars. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll go with it. I, I I'm just that one's over and that's above my pay grade. A tan low fat. The cataract patient sees well enough, as he knows it's a Lincoln. I didn't get that. I didn't get that one either, man. Um. <laughs> I tell you about the guy who bought the donkey. No. From the other guy? No. He went there. He's like, I'd like to get a donkey, you know, and have a donkey and a little pet. And the guy says, Well, I got one over here. He says, uh, you know, he's a good donkey, but he don't look too good. Ah, the guy looks at him, see, a little shabby. I like that. Though. I'll take him home. Well, this damn donkey's blind as a bat, banging into the walls of the house. Guy took him back next day. He said, Hey, he said, What's the matter with donkey? You sold me a blind donkey. He says, I know. I told you. He's a good donkey. So <laughs> <good. laughs> look too good. <laughs> oh. So, um, yeah, invigorating. There's a good word for you, Scott. Your cross-country road trip is invigorating. Uh, did Josh DeFranzo okay the hit? Gorin wants to know. John, John DeFranzo. John DeFranzo okay the hit. Uh, yeah, he was there. Well, he was okay because yeah. he had to have then. Oh yeah. Uh, Geronimo de los Silos. Twenty twenty four will be a bumper crop. Lots of disposable income floating about. Prosperity be upon you, Adam. Thank you, Geronimo. 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 <laughs> uh, Kevin just uh, updated us and said, "Frown oh, car oh, instead of Tom oh, car." Lincoln frown car. Okay, got it. Got it. Uh, Decibolics Rex out there in Romania wants to know what's the most beautiful city in the USA. And if I had to pick the most beautiful city that I've seen, mm, 
I, you know, I haven't seen San Francisco. I hear, I mean, uh, <laughs> well, the Golden Gate Bridge looks nice. You see pictures of it. I mean, that's a nice, that's beautiful the city, background. The city, oh, yeah, the city yeah. itself really is kind of shitty. And I, I think I mean that literally. It's what oh, I hear yeah. anyway. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't, I don't know the most beautiful city in the USA. Man. There's there's no, there aren't any mo cities that are beautiful anymore. No. You might say Chicago's beautiful. The architecture. Yeah, the architecture is wonderful. Vegas is just cool. I like the architecture in Vegas is definitely unique. There's nothing like that in in the world. Um yeah, I don't know. New York's beautiful. I mean, the, the skyline, you leave the Statue of Liberty, but once you from it's a distance, from a distance. When you get up close into that shit, you're like, no, no, thanks. I'm good. <laughs> I'm all I'm all right. I don't need to be in here. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. It's the big view looks great. So um That's a tough question, guy. It really is. It really is. That's a that's a really tough. What's the most beautiful city in Romania? That's a there. That's a good question. Let's, let's ask that. I know there's a bunch of castles in Germany that are beautiful, and I know they have castles. buildings that are just unbelievably gorgeous. I want to go see some of that in my lifetime. So, Timothy Foster, hello, Adam and Red. Sorry, I'm late. I was in the shower. Too much information, Tim. But hope you all had a good Christmas. Sure, yeah, I ran out of the shower and got on my vlog. <laughs> right on, Tim. Good to have you with. Good to see you. Uh, now that you're out of the shower, that is. Yes. <laughs> Billy Opland. The old Italian men used to make uh, red wine at their club in Erie and leave it. I uh, was also friends with Philly Spilatro. He got whacked in his kitchen after the brothers got it. There was a Philly Spilatro and a Philly Spilatro? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But all the families I knew made their own red wine. Oh. Everybody I knew made their own one wine. They had casks that were like uh, half the size, 30 gallons casks. Okay. And they made their own wine. Some would be with grapes. Uh, sometimes they made dandelion wine. But it was good wine. Homemade. <laughs> so uh, knowing Red, he probably still sells, sells the beads. He's got a great history selling beads, I understand. <laughs> Red, you get that joke, don't you? Oh, yeah, I get the okay, joke. All right, just making sure you got that one. If not, I got some pictures over here I could pull up. and put. <laughs> Doctor told me my wife could survive the cancer, maybe through a little oral gratification would help heal. So I went in and I tried. After five minutes, I ran out. Doc, doc. What do I do now? He said, what's wrong? He said, she's choking. <laughs> Dan Lofat, really? Dan Lofat. Uh, oh, man. So 60 degrees in Chicago Heights this year on Christmas. Damn, that's a warm Christmas, Sean, in the yeah. Heights. Jeez. That's, uh, yeah, that's actually beautiful. Yeah, that's a, it's a beautiful, not, not a white Christmas. That's a damn short, not a white Christmas if it's 60. So I asked my dog, what is two minus two equal? He said, nothing. <laughs> horses, horses that are difficult to deal with after the dark, they're called nightmares. I knew a few of them. <laughs> Nightmare joke. Hey, no more dad jokes. All right. This is getting out of control today. It's completely out of control, you guys. So just calm it down. Cool it down. If not, Red's going to need to get a towel, and we don't want to have to go there. No. So, <laughs> if you're, if you're going to drive me to drinking, oh, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving the Hot Rod Lincoln. That was a song. Oh, that really? Lincoln, that Hot Rod Lincoln. That was a song. I saw a putty cat. Uh, Dave Little, all the way from Windsor, Canada. Windsor, Enjoy Ontario. Show. Happy New Year's, Adam and Red. Dave Little. Happy New Year's to you, too, and welcome into the show. I've never said Dave Little's name before. So many new people on this that are coming in and listening. And by, Hey, guys, go back and check the playlists. There's tons of content to watch. Um, really, honestly, you should see some of the stuff that Red and I talk about. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hello, Dan Smits. 
Um, he was on the fire department with my dad. Ah. Nah. No, Adam, SF, San Francisco sucks. There are none. No, no nice city, right? New York's a disaster. Everything's a damn disaster around here. It really is. I mean, all these cities, especially Chirac. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Joshua Allen Marshall, I think it would take too long to describe my... I did a video on my uh, encounter with Mad Sam and also on uh, my vlog. We've talked about Sam a few times. Yeah. Yeah, you told the stories. Hey, was it was it you that saw Sam that, that held his hand out like this in the ashtray? No, that was uh, Ken Hansen, and they were close. They both both were devil worshippers. Damn. Ken saw that happen? Yeah. He saw the ashtray move by itself. No, I saw him move his hand. Oh, you saw Ken do that. I looked underneath the bar. I couldn't find I asked you because you're a magician. Yeah, I asked you how it could be done. Yeah, and I, I gave you a couple of options of ways of things that it could happen, but you know, uh, you never know. I mean, there's there's a million methods for you know the I same. Effect. I was smoking, and I needed an ashtray, and he went like this, and it like this, and it just moved over. Wow! Wow! I mean, there were no wires on it, no nothing, you know, attached to it, and it was plastic. It was a plastic ashtray. Polly Dibbs, I read the feds found just one tape in Tony Spilatro's car radio. It actually, it wasn't Tony's. It was Michael's car. That's right. And it was the James Bond soundtrack. Imagine that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a mark. That was a Mark. A Mark 7, I believe. Was it Lincoln Mark 7? Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, that's a fact, Polly. That's what they, uh, that's the last thing they were listening to. So, hmm. Uh, just glad everyone hate. Just glad everyone's enjoying the holidays and keeping good spirits. Yes, definitely. And uh, Bong James Bong, make me up a little of that moonshine while you're uh, working on it. There. <laughs> Kentucky moonshine, hell uh, yeah! Flap a pie. <laughs> Rhonda, Rhonda's in the room. Hello, y'all. Our Italian cowgirl. Happy New Year, listening while I work. Hell, D.C. Hell, D.C. Work must not be good today. No. Oh, no, no. Hello is what she was writing. Hello. That's She just stopped the thing. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's good good to see. Oh, she's calling out the Don Cheech. That's what it is. That's who D.C. is. Don Cheechio. Don Cheech and Rhonda, I swear to God, they got something going on off of this show. They have to. I mean, come on. They're back and forth in the comments. All you got to agree with me on this, Red. I do. Don Cheech, I hope you had a wonderful Merry Christmas, and uh, um, and uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure you did. But uh, thanks for being in the show again I'm today. Seeing his recipes on Facebook, and I'll tell you what, this guy loves food. Oh man, no, I see his Facebook posts too. Food, it's unbelievable. Some mm -hmm. of it, you sit there and it makes you hungry. Don't start don't don't start talking about Italian beefs and all that now, man. Get me going today. Damn, I gotta lose some damn weight after all this Christmas cookies. Shoot. Take Can it you easy, skinny. You're doing okay. No, I'm gonna get back to my original weight. Ten pounds, four ounces. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Julian, can you speak? On Fat Herbie Blitzstein murder in the 97 in Vegas. I don't know anything um, about that. Uh, Red? From what I heard, not from what I saw because I wasn't out there. He worked very closely with Tony at the Gold Rush. And, you know, all his, I don't know if he worked at the uh, gift shop at whatever, but he worked with um, at the Gold Rush. And wasn't he the guy? that uh got murdered yeah yeah right outside his house it was like in his, his doorsteps or something where you it's in a it's in a uh, gated community here in town so I, I i looked it up uh at one point to see if we could you know include it on the mob tour and but it, you can't get in to see it so uh it's kind of off the off the path anyway of, of the route that we go uh around town so joshua allen marshall speaking of food i just ate a whole whole pizza from little caesars 
Damn, man. I hope that didn't give you any heartburn. That yeah. stuff gives me indigestion, man. They're a bit greasy for me. <laughs> yeah, it gives me indigestion. But a whole damn one? Wow. That's a – you get one of those geor- – I ate the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, Paulie Dibbs. I believe – I believe it was the mob from L.A. that killed Herbie in 97. They wanted to rob him, apparently. Um, no. No? No. Oh, uh, hold on. Don, was retaliation from Tony. <laughs> Don Cheech. Rumor was L.A. wanted to take over his loan shark and fencing business. That that makes a little bit more. That sounds about rob him. They wanted to, they wanted to rob him of his businesses. Right. When they go big, they go big. Oh, Maurice, yeah. Maurice Cage, what's going on, buddy? How are you? I hope that you had a wonderful Christmas and uh, exciting New Year coming up. 2024 is going to be a trip, man. Yes. It's going to be a trip, dude. It always is when they got elections. It's always, it's like crazy shit happens, you know, virus. Yeah, I'm getting a kick out of the odds, the <laughs> Vegas odds on the election. <laughs> Are they putting odds up? What are the odds? What's who they got? Who they got going? What's the over under? Uh, I forget what it is today. It changes daily. Does it? <laughs> yeah, but uh, Biden's—they uh, got Biden winning. Oh, they do. That's what Vegas is. Vegas is banking on. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see what happens. Who knows? Um, Timothy Foster. I just watched a video the other day of Frank Collada. He talks about it on one of your videos. Um, Timothy Foster. He what did you talk about? Herbie, Herbie Blitzstein. Oh yeah, yes. he talked yes. about Herbie. Yes, there's. I recall making a thumbnail uh, that had Herbie, Fat Herbie, in it. So that means that it was some subject matter on. Well, that. he knew Herbie. He knew Herbie. Yeah, some subject matter on that show uh, included him. So, yeah. Um, Polly Dips. Besides a deep dish and Italian beef sandwich. Is there any other Chicago staple you recommend to an out of towner? Not me. Chicago dog, Chicago hot dog, oh, the hot dog, Chicago hot also, dog. I like Asabuco. Asabuco, yeah, yeah, Asabuco. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Julian, can you speak on Joey Cusumano being mob boss in two thousand and one? I can't. I just watched a video, guys. I was telling you, just watched this video. It was an interview with Oscar Goodman about the mob in Vegas. Had to have been done in the 90s or early 2000s. And uh, Joey Cusumano's in that talking and being interviewed. It was pretty damn interesting. If I find, you know, I'll find it later. I'll throw it up in the uh, community tab if you guys want. Look in the community tab and I'll put that uh, video up to watch. It's like it's an hour long. Pretty damn interesting, though about uh, Oscar, uh, the way his tactics in court were. <laughs> they were good. He was Man. a good, very good attorney. How about the cannolis? Yeah, and, yeah we forgot oh, the dessert. <laughs> yeah, if you're in the Chicago. <laughs> Chicago tavern-style pizza. Um, Chicago Maxwell Street Polish sausage is still oh, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. And, 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 That's, and, not yeah. That's not a dinner. <laughs> Um, pierogies. I saw a putty cat. Man, you make me want to go to pierogi fest in Whiting. You know, like, come on, let's go to pierogi fest. Uh, ah, punchy day, punchy day. <laughs> oh man, the food in Chicago. God, I kind of stop thinking about it. I get fatter just thinking about it. I sit here and just get fatter and fatter and fatter. <laughs> All right, All I'm right. at the footlongs. It's lots of fun. Lots of fun is still there, Sean. I don't, no. Do you still have those footlongs in there? Because I remember seeing them in the, the – the, I don't know if they still do that or not. But We but actually I, have footlongs at Sam's Club by me. Oh, you go to Sam's Club for those footlongs, huh? Yeah, they got footlongs, man. <laughs> it's a big hot dog. <laughs> Leave the bratwurst. Take the cannoli. <laughs> so, there's so much good food in sugar. You just can't. I looked up what a pierogi is. I now have my life mission. Listen, they got different kinds of pierogies. They got sauerkraut in them. They got potato in them. Potato is uh, the most common. Onion and onion and potato is another one. They, oh, but there's so many ways to make pierogies, and I love my dad's pierogies were really good. 
man, the filling, it's the filling. That's what it is. The, 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 the dough is good. You got to get the dough right. But the filling. Thomas Ruin. Ruan. Breaded steak sandwich. You're talking about Rico Benny's, man. Rico Benny's. Hell yeah. Now we're talking. Oh, God. Damn. Being the son of a cook, Adam, is when it went downhill. Hold on. Being the son of a cook is when it went downhill. Yeah. No kidding, man. There was so much food. Dan, if you thought there was food at the firehouse, you should have seen it at home. I mean, it was like, it piled, like, and I, I being the, you know, son was like, I come home and I, I scarfed the leftovers. So I was always eating my dad. If when I moved and came to Vegas, he called, he said, Hey, he said, the, the leftovers aren't disappearing anymore. They're starting to build up in the refrigerator. <laughs> you know, he's counting on me to finish everything off. You know, that's what I, oh, my dad's cooking was wonderful. I can't believe that Scott brought this up. Scott, I used to get beefs at Red's place. No shit, Scott, huh? Scott's got a cool little shop in Chicago. It's an oddities, curiosity kind of store. Really cool that. stuff. You used to go to Red's place. No kidding. You used to get the beefs over there. Did you get the, the magazines too while you were there? <laughs> that was in the back store. <laughs> I'm just asking. Huh? You never know. <laughs> Yeah, Dan, he experimented on us. He did. He loved experimenting in the kitchen with different things my dad did. So, um, Adam, why don't you and Red and Joe open a pizza joint? Hole in the wall pizza with Frank's recipe. Do you know, back in, I want to say it was seven, right around seven, I met Frank, the first time I met Frank was in, oh, end of, end of six. I think it was December of six that I first met Frank. And Robert Allen was working with Frank at the time. And um, there were talks. I know there were talks about opening the Upper Crust Pizza again, up, open, reopening the Upper Crust Pizzeria. But there was talks about that. Excuse me. Never happened, but there was talk talk about it. Oh, uh, Maurice, do I miss Panos? Oh, man, do I miss Panos. Damn, big you. You don't look like you miss Panos. No, I don't look like I miss Panos at all. Oh, yeah, man. Get in my belly. You know what I mean? So, yeah, pizza puffs, fries, a steak sandwich. Those are some of my favorites at Pano's. God. Billy uh, Oplin says he met. Up. I'm getting fat thinking about it, man. I got to lose Pops weight. Spansko at, uh... <laughs> Pops Pansco at the Napolitano, Napolitano Sandwich Shop by Erie Damon. When I was around 14 years yeah. old. That post, that was a famous place. Fans go. He just said hello. But hey, it's all right. Red, any mob connections to the adult shops you see along interstates? Like the Lion's Den, et cetera. John O, that's on the side of 94 going up to um, uh, Milwaukee, isn't it? They and all page play, play street tax. All of them page street tax. All I don't know what they do now, but it's different. Yeah, they uh, they make them kick up. So, Grievous, Euros, numero uno. Yeah, no kidding, man. Ugh, yes. Uh, Polly Dibs, I love shops with oddities. Drop the name, Scott, and I'll put it on the list. Scott, yeah. put, your, put your shop up here so that Polly Dibs know where, knows where to go. Put your address and, and name of the shop. You get a couple of customers coming in from the channel for you. Um, it's really cool. Go look at his Facebook page, Paulie, and you'll see pictures of his shop and the different things. He's got really cool stuff. So I, I ever go back to Chicago for a weekend or week, I'm definitely going to go hit it up and check it out. So, um, here's another new person. I never heard of this person either. Who's this? Who's this? Mem ready, Mr. Eddie Jimenez, Mr. Eddie Jimenez. Hello from Chicago. Happy holidays. Happy holidays oh. to you, buddy. Mr. Eddie, it's nice to have you with us. Yeah, I so many new people popping in here. So yeah. the bars in Berwyn, Illinois, had video poker machines, and the bartenders would pay out. Daniel, that's right. And they all said, for amusement only, and a little piece of paper that was taped to the machine, for amusement only. But yeah. You went over to the bartender and say, cash me out. And they hit that machine. It'll click, 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 click. You know, count up all of the things, reset the counter on it. Yeah. And they pay out. 
That's a, that's a thing. Holly Dibbs wants to know, back in the day, um, where would the average show go to place a bet in Chicago? Well, yeah, we're, most of them just picked up the phone. <laughs> call the bookie, right? Oh, yeah. Call the bookie. Man, when I was working at uh, McCormick Place, dude, that was rampant, man. Every booth I worked on, it was, hey, hey, guys, call, make a call, put to such and such on such and such all the time. And I'm going, I didn't understand sports. I really didn't get into sports. I liked the magic. So I wasn't really into watching baseball, right. basketball, right. football. Yeah, it just wasn't my thing. So I didn't understand, so I never bet on it. Had I known about it, I probably would have bet on it. But it would have made the games more interesting. Anyway. You're not a gambler. Me? <laughs> Me? <laughs> Every <laughs> once, in a, once in a great while, all right? Every once in a great, great while. Maybe, you know, play a little Kino or something, but that's it. That's it. Rebecca Berry, Happy New Year to you. Rebecca Berry. That's another new name. Rebecca. Yes. God bless. God bless you too. Happy New Year. Hope that you have a wonderful year. Buckle up. 2024 is going to be a, you know, going to be crazy. Benjamin Kundari. Kundari. Uh, Bill's Drunken Chicken used to be on Calumet City, Illinois, Burnham Avenue. Bill's Drunken Chicken on Burnham Avenue? I mean, I lived off of Burnham Avenue, and I don't remember. That might have been before my time, though, Benjamin. I wasn't born until 77, so I may not. You know, I start remembering late 80s, you know, in Calumet City is what I can remember. So there were still hookers walking around, I can tell you that much, up and down State Street. There <laughs> I remember I was with my, my buddy Eric. His him we were in the back of his mom's car, and we were driving down State Street, and there were two hookers walking along the street. And I remember his mom. We pulled up to the stop sign. Oh no, no, honey, we don't want any of that. <laughs> he kept driving, and I'll never forget that. It was pretty funny. Anyway, um, wow, Red, that just flew by. 157th and Burnham, um, according to Mr. Smiths. It that was, was out there. 157th and well, I lived at 164th and 150. What was New Year? Uh, River Oaks Drive was 159th, so that had to have been a couple streets before River Oaks Drive. Would that be like by where the Embers was? That was all Chicago Heights territory. No, well, yeah, East Side, small building, East Side. Of the that would have been on on the left side of the street if I was heading north. Bills, I don't remember that, Dan. I don't I don't remember it. There there was a bill south on Route Forty One, according to Don Cheech. Sounds like a good place though, doesn't it? Oh yeah, drunken chicken shack. Oh, yeah. So, man, that just flew by, Red. As Bill's a drunken chicken. Ladies. Uh, I, what's his name? Uh -huh. Closer to Tim's. Okay, I think I know where you're talking about now. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. I think. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Next week we'll find out. Red, it's been fun. You have a great day. God bless. Yes, I'm going to have a – I've got a, a show going on to wish you all a happy New Year's sometime. I'll put it up before New Year's Eve. All right. Maybe I'll pop on with you if I'm not doing anything. That'd be fun. Until then, we've hey. all, this is Adam's last show of the year. Last show <laughs> of the <on>. year. <laughs> it's been fun. It's been a great time this year. Thanks, Red, for doing a whole nother year. You're welcome. I enjoyed Honestly, it. Honestly, God, man, you did all of 2021, 2022, and 2023 with me here. I Three. missed one. Remember the one I missed where Anthony G. Martini came on? <laughs> yeah, he did. He came on. And we missed a couple, too, this year. Things got busy at the end in our third third quarter here. But um, next year, we'll be on track for all of them. And uh, it's going to be fun, guys. I look forward to it. You guys have a great uh, great rest of your great rest of your year. And uh, happy new year. We'll see you guys. Come out to Vegas. The Mob Tour is running. Join us for the Vegas Mob Tour. Experience Sin City's dark past.
Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie Casino and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never-before-seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall Gang. This is how serious we thought he saw. Sounds like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the dry one. Here's an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course dinner at the Tuscany Gardens, and then VIP seating for the long-running hit the Rat Pack is back show. Experience Vegas. The way it was meant to be.